I'm Private Harvey Degree Jr. I'm from Shelby, North Carolina, and I just entered basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I'm Private David Welk from Leavenworth, Kansas, and I just entered basic training at Fort Knox. When we first got off the bus, it was a rush. Uh, we were a little intimidated. The first thing we saw was that um, infamous, like, brown brim hat and we're like, oh, this is drill sergeant, we're gonna be in for it. Getting off the bus, it felt good at first. And then after a while, when you finally realize that you're away from your family, you start feeling a little bit more away from everything. But after a while, it goes away and you get used to being here. When I was getting my first haircut, I felt uniform. I felt as a team, we were all the same and we're all gonna start the same. My hair was short enough because I started to get the military cut before I came, but then they just pretty much went all out and I didn't know my head was so white. When we first issued our uniforms and boots, uh, it felt really good. It made us feel more welcome to the Army. It gave us a sense of honor. Putting our names in the U.S. Army and the flag on there felt pretty good putting it on because then the drill instructors can know who you are instead of just calling you by your line number at first. It, it really did feel good because you, you were wearing a uniform that many people are, are, are living for every day, that live by the values. It's more than just the linen. Drill and ceremony is a lot harder than it looked, but my mom was in the Army and she helped me before I left, so I had some stuff to go on, so it was easier for me to transition into what the instructors were telling us to do. The hardest part about drill and ceremony is keeping everyone aligned and straight and focused and keeping our feet in the correct distances from each other. It's had its ups and downs. I feel myself getting better. I feel the men working together, like we're working together more as a team. You got a whole bunch of different people together from all over the world and all over the United States just trying to get together. All we have to do is follow simple instructions and each day will go by with a breeze. I'm just taking it one day at a time. I'm Private Justin Ersig. I'm from Lake Georgia, New York, and I'm currently at basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I'm Christopher Wynn from Bessemer, Alabama, and I am in basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky. Rifle and bayonet was very physical. The repetition that goes into it is very monotonous. They teach you the fundamental techniques of survival, but you have to learn it from what they call repetition and blunt force. We have to keep doing it so your muscle memory can keep you going. Having the drill sergeant throw so many instructions at you in different movements is, is, it was very hard. I honestly didn't expect it to be as hard as it was. It was kind of hard, you know, after that first hour of trying to keep focused. You have to actually put the first foot forward of paying attention to what the drill sergeant is saying and also just applying it. Today was the first day we got to use our weapon instead of keep it by our side. It made me respect my weapon a lot more. Most people think when you have a rifle, you just have to use it to shoot. But also I learned different strategies that could cripple your opponent to give you a better advantage. The Pugil Stick exercise taught me that I need to be more physically fit. I just, I ran out of stamina big time. The first round was okay, and then after that it was downhill from there. It was more fun actually getting out there to interact with your peers and your bunk mates and have a little fun, but also show that you do have the physical aspects of survival that they did teach us today. Five rounds for only a couple minutes was very tiring and it, it drained me. Well, I'm one of the older soldiers in the platoon here, but I want to be the one that they say, hey, if, if Specialist Christopher Wynn can do it, I know I can do it too. It's hard to adapt to the things they tell you to do, but once, once you start doing them, you start working together as a team, the drill sergeants, they start to build your confidence up and they help you progress as a team. I am Private Nathaniel Alejandro. I am from Texas and I am doing basic training at Fort Knox, Kentucky. I'm Private Harvey Degree Jr. The only thing I had heard about the confidence tower is that it was really high. First, they told us how to tie the Swiss seats. We actually helped each other a lot. We helped each other get the Swiss seats right, but we also checked uh, uh, with the sergeants to make sure we had them right. They go through it step by step with you. The drill sergeant's very, very helpful. Uh, he does yell at you a lot, but I mean, that's just part of basic training. Well, we progressed to um, the 45 degree incline where we familiarize ourselves with the repelling, uh, like concepts of repelling. So they tell you what you're gonna do, and when you, when you get up there, that way you go straight up and do it. Um, even though I've, I've done it before and I'm not too afraid of heights, um, it's always that anticipation, not really uh, nervousness, but like more of anxiousness. I'll admit uh, it was pretty it was pretty steep. It was a straight 90 degree angle, straight up and down. I had to prove to myself that I could actually actually just go through with it and get it over with because that's what I wanted to do. You know, once I started getting the, those couple of jumps down the repel wall. I felt more confident with each with each jump, and by the time I get near the bottom, it didn't feel like it was a big deal anymore, and it makes you want to do it again. Everybody wants to do it again, though. 
but this confidence tower does build confidence because going up you really it really looks high but as soon as you get down you're wishing it was higher and you just got to take it one step at a time if you try to rush it basics gonna be a while but if you know what you're doing you listen to drill sergeant you listen to your fellow soldiers um, you're gonna have fun I am specialist Christopher Wynn I am private David Woke. this week has been mainly more about the first aid, life-saving training, and also the combative ways of fighting. This combat life-saving class that we took gives me a lot of confidence to help people out even if it's not in a war situation. The first aid classes that I've had prior were more of a sit-down basis instead of a hands-on basis. So this time it actually felt good to actually get a chance to hold the mannequin, get down there and learn the proper techniques. Well, the difference I found in this class being three days and the civilian class I took that was one day. The three day class covers a whole lot more in depth in the bleeding, CPR. It's good to learn how to get people out of a combat zone and get them to a safer environment. The neck carry was a little difficult today because it was wet and we're on a hill. Mass doesn't mean anything unless you use the proper technique of how to lift or follow a comrade and actually get them to safety. It's good to know that my battle buddies here have gone through a three-day course, they've learned the material, we've been tested on it, and they, it assures me that if ever put into a situation where I'm wounded or physically injured, that they can come render assistance as soon as possible. We also did combatives this week. Combatives is learning to defend yourself without a weapon. Uh, we're slowly, gradually moving up in our combative states from learning how to do a fighter stance to actually learning how to grapple with our, our opponent. The repetition we're doing is to teach our muscles how to react in that situation without us actually thinking about it. Well, in combative training, repetition is a key. Doing this, so many repetitions that your body will just become used and react in a certain way. My spirits are high waiting to move on to BRM. I'm definitely looking forward to next week. I'm Private Justin Ersig. I'm Private Harvey Degree. Today when we arrived at the confidence course, I was very excited to get started. I was not expecting as many obstacles as there was here. We had uh, many different towers and rope obstacles. We had um, things that included balance. Um, anything we did included teamwork. It definitely did help bring us together as battle buddies. I was in a group with a particular guys that I never hung out with before, never really got to know, and I got to bond with them today. And like we built a lot of team effort, and it really spawned from the confidence style. That was the first thing we did. Fatigue definitely did kick in, and it made the obstacles that were at the end of the course a lot harder than they would have been if they were placed at the beginning of the course. My favorite event at the confidence course was uh, the weaver, where we have to um, weave our bodies in and out. It, it was the most difficult thing for me, the most challenging thing. After the confidence course, we went over to the gas chamber. I did some research before I came here on the gas chamber. Looking at it online has nothing to do with the experience itself. It was kind of creepy, and it, like our, our nerves were going, our adrenaline was going. When we first went in there, the gas was already going. Uh, I wasn't expecting that at all. We had a guy panic enough to where he actually took his mask off way ahead of time. I was miserable when I first walked out the door for the first couple laps around the cones, but uh, when I started walking down back to my platoon, I felt a lot better, and it was definitely it was definitely a good experience. Getting, getting a lot of the obstacle courses in the gas chamber out of the way this week has definitely boosted my confidence. A lot of stress is off our minds now because the confidence course and the gas chamber are completely out of the way now. Um, we can just focus on um, things that are to come. Right now, I'm just looking forward to whatever, whatever's next. I'm Private Nathaniel Alejandro. I'm Specialist Christopher Wynn. This week, we've been doing BRM training, which is basic rifle marksmanship. I've never actually fired a weapon in civilian life, so right now, I'm kind of one of the newcomers. I was definitely looking forward to BRM. It's better than sitting in a classroom and taking notes. It's actual hands-on training, and it's actually fun. So really they're teaching us the fundamental techniques of being in the prone supported position, the prone unsupported position, and the kneeling position. Just different firing techniques to engage the enemy. It was an adrenaline rush. You get so much from it, it's like eating half a jar of honey. The first time I fired my M16 rifle, I was so tense and nervous for the recoil. When I shot it, it was easier than I thought. And it was also a pleasant surprise to know that I hit my first target shooting for the first time. The procedures are extremely easy to follow, and if you get lost at any point, not only are there drill sergeants next to you, but the tower is giving you command step by step also. The hardest part is the mental aspect of it. You really have to focus on the target at hand. 
Safety is always a huge factor. Honestly, they break it down to a third grade level. Safety is a must when we're using live ammunition. So if one person lifts their M16 up, that's what we call flagging. And flagging is putting a person in danger of being shot by a live round or placing their weapon in a dangerous position. The safety is a must out here. When we first got this weapon, I just looked at it as dead weight. We were carrying it, we were learning different positions, but we weren't doing anything with it. But since we've started BRM, it's like my best friend. I mean, I know that that thing can save my life, and especially the lives of our fellow soldiers. I'm really confident tomorrow I will qualify and be one of those guys rooting my battle buddies on from the sideline. I'm Private Justin Ersick. I'm Private David Wilk. Today we were taught the basic principles of cover and concealment. A lot of this was, it was new material to me, and just the positions were really awkward. My helmet was in the, in the mud, but the positions we learned were beneficial to us. The pit was just training to get us used to going into the low crawl, high crawl, rushing position to the prone position, the low crawl or high crawl. After the pit, the drill sergeants took us to the practice course and they showed us how we would do the buddy system and talk with our buddy when we were going through the drill. It's nice to know all my drill sergeants have been in combat because it makes me feel more confident in myself that they've been there, done that, and they're teaching us those skills. The final evaluation was just putting everything we learned beforehand together. We started off with the wall, then we had to go under barbed wire, and then most of the time from there was just rushing, then getting into the prone position, covering while our battle buddy moved up to the next one. The most fun part was the explosions. I thought the explosions were definitely fun. I've never heard anything like that before. Just going off behind you and getting down on your knees and protecting your weapon. That was pretty cool. The hardest part for me was to go underneath the barbed wire because I'm so long when I'm using my weapon to push the barbed wire up. I had to worry about when I turn, I get caught on it. Basic training is going a lot better now. We just got out of red phase a couple weeks ago. Uh, white phase is a lot better. We have a lot more free time. I'm getting used to it day by day, little by little, so it's going good. I'm Private Nathaniel Alejandro. I'm Private David Wilk. Lately our primary objective has been urban operations, which is where we learn to clear buildings, clear rooms, and watch each other's backs. Uh, the hardest part for urban operations for me was, you don't know if it's going to be cleared already, nobody in there, and then the next room could have four or five people in it. You don't know what's going to hit you, what's, what's coming, I mean, uh, whether you're the first man or the last man, I mean, you just don't know what's going to happen. I trust myself now. Our drill sergeants are very thorough. Our first sergeant was very thorough. Our captain's very thorough when it comes to all this training because even though it is a big responsibility, I can handle it way better than a regular civilian cad, which is what BASIC is about, learning how to do basic combat training, and that way when you're in the field, all this stuff just comes natural. Well, this week uh, we've had a change from when we first got here. The weather conditions today and this week have been extremely cold. There's been a lot of snow. The cold weather affects people during training in different ways, but it didn't stop our training at all. We train in all kinds of weather. The variation in temperature is something you have to expect as a soldier. That's good. That was real good. Comparing our first APFT to our final APFT, which was today, I did better in each event. I increased dramatically in all my events from my first APFT to my last one. My favorite is the run. Your lungs are hurting, your legs are hurting, but you just keep staring forward, breathing in and out, and you're fine. And it's my favorite because I zone out. Well, I'm looking forward to anything that we have left, because that means I'm one step closer to graduating. I am looking forward to our final tra training exercise, because it means that all the stuff we've learned, all the stuff we were taught in basic, it's coming to a wrap. And we're going to see if we know it, and I feel very confident that I do, and I can't wait. I'm Private Justin Ursi. I'm Specialist Christopher Wynn. This week was our Warrior Challenge. It's the last big event we had before the end of basic training. This training exercise is culminating everything that we've learned from the first week until this final week before graduation. Well, on the road marches, we did, we did the 15K yesterday. I pretty much just try to go into my own little world. I just keep going off of just willpower. Kind of zone out, either count, sing songs, or do something just to get my mind off the actual task of walking so many miles. During the Warrior Challenge, which is right now, we're at a FOB, which stands for Forward Operating Base. It has tents, checkpoints, um, anything that you need to live is in the FOB. The purpose of the patrol was to give you an understanding of what it will be like in Iraq or Afghanistan if you do get deployed. You're going to be doing road marches and patrols and stuff when you get deployed. So this really gave me a better understanding of what's going to happen in the real world. Now that we're at boot phase and towards the end of basic training, the drill sergeants tend to give us more one-on-one -on -one attention and it, it helps us a lot more. 
We're almost done with the Warrior Challenge, and after that, we have graduation, which I'm really looking forward to. So right now, we're just all trying to come together and make that last step forward before becoming those future soldiers of America. I'm Private David Wilk. I'm Private Nathaniel Alejandro. This week, we had our final inspection for Family Day and prepared for graduation. Uh, coming up to the final inspection, I had a lot of anxiety just because I wasn't used to being inspected by the higher ranking officers. You spend hours try to, trying to get ready for one inspection, which takes around 30 minutes. I was looking forward to family day that we had yesterday. It was great to go with my family, hang out there for a little bit. I was, I was very excited to see my family. I didn't think they'd come from Texas uh, all the way to Kentucky, but I was very glad they did. When I look back in this in five years, the things I'm going to remember the most are probably the friendships I've started here and some funny things that Joe started to say all the time to get our attention. I'm looking forward to AIT. Uh, my AIT, luckily enough, is in San Antonio, which is less than an hour away from my house. I'm very happy with the decision that I made to come into the Army because I was doing, before I joined the Army, I was working at a leather store. Once I joined, I've seen a lot of changes in myself throughout the last 10 weeks. Knowing that you've gone from a trainee, a civilian, to an actual soldier representing the United States Army, it's a great feeling to have.